Good evening. Welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Monday, October 2nd, 2006. It's on or about 7.30 p.m. We do have a quorum with all members of council present. Our next item on our agenda is disposition of minutes from the regular sessions September 5th and September 18th. Do I have a motion? I move we accept the minutes of September 5th and September 18th. Second. second. Motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. Opposed? Aye. The minutes have been accepted. Communications, Member Weil. Um, I have a request to nominate um, uh, Mr. Dave Sinkoff to uh, the, as an alternate position for the Athens Street Commission. Um, Do we have a second? Second. Okay, um, Dave Sinkoff lives up on Columbia Avenue. Um, he's got a botany degree from many years back, um, and I think we could actually use the alternate, who is what's much the, more versed. What's the last name? Sinkoff. That would be S-I-N-C-O-F-F. -F. Is there further discussion on the nomination of Mr. Sinkoff to the Tree Commission in an alternate position? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? He has been accepted. Member Patterson. Mr. President, I've uh, moved that we make the following <laughs> changes to the Arts Commission, uh, that we reappoint Michael Tobar and Robert Winters to uh, two-year terms, and that we appoint Patty Mitchell. Um, she will be replacing Paul Legree, who just moved to Canada, and so we lost him. Uh, Patty is a resident of Athens and has been an extremely active person uh, statewide, internationally, and here in Athens she um, is one of the, the principal artists at Passion Work. And uh, so we're feeling very fortunate that she has applied to be on the Arts Commission. Motion and a second to reappoint Mr. Tobar and Mr. Winters and to appoint Ms. Mitchell. Correct. Mr. Further I, discussion. I just had a question. The, the memorandum we have at one point says Municipal Arts Council and another time says Municipal Arts Commission. What's it is commission. Commission? Okay. And that in the comprehensive plan. I went through and, and corrected it because it, it interchanged those comments. So we seem to be a little confused on our name. So it is a commission. Thank you. Is there further discussion? All those in favor of the appointments as stated? Aye. Aye. Opposed? They have been appointed. Member Sands. Mr. President, I move that we accept the auditor's reports for the uh, month of August that Second. are in the office. Motion and a second for their discussion on accepting the auditor's reports for the month of August. You should have received the synopsis just now, but the, uh, the full details were mailed to you, I think, sometime last week. The unappropriated balance report? No? Yeah, that just came around. Further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the reports as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? The reports have been accepted. Uh, Member Bishop. <laughs> oh, under communications, I'd just like to remind uh, the public, especially, that there will be short summaries of all council and committee meetings posted on the website, which is <coughs> ci slash Athens dot oh dot us. Right. Did I get the website? I think it's ci dot. Isn't it? Ci dot. Okay. It's a dot. Oh, there it is ci.athens.ohio.us and so people who you know either want to review what happened tonight and weren't able to watch TV please um, check the website for short summaries of, of the meetings thank you oh Amy how soon are those posted um, within 24 hours that's our goal and the minutes from the committee meetings of last week are posted okay. are there any other communications anyone wishes to share Reports and communications from other elected officials. How about the late, great Gary Hunter? Well, I'm sorry. I don't know. Thanks for that. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> uh, I have no report tonight, Mr. President. Okay. Mayor Abel. 
Just that uh, we're continuing to send code enforcement officers out on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Uh, I think this we past weekend they issued uh, 15 warnings to otherwise they were first time at that particular address told them to clean it up. They did so they didn't get a ticket. I think there was one second offense and three first offenses tickets issued. Uh, I'll answer any questions anybody might have on any other items. Questions for the mayor, member Bishop. Okay, just in terms of, of city business, I was walking on Union Street again today and was again just totally disgusted by the storefronts. The windows are filthy. The, I mean, and, and, and there's just so much. And I was wondering, is this an administrative matter or is there something legislatively we can do to help generate, you know, to help businesses understand that they get a lot from the community and so they ought to at least have a presentable front. Mm -hmm. Is that something? There's, that there's nothing in the code <coughs> re regulations that I'm aware of other than litter, but if paint's peeling or it's dirty, there's nothing in the code that that allows code enforcement to to enforce anything. Okay. Is it possible? Are there any precedents for you know community uh, kind of standards for visual? Hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, is there? Well, I guess that if there is nothing in the code, is it something that could be somehow included in code? I think you can put here? almost, you know, a lot of different, I mean, there's architectural review boards, mm -hmm. there are, you know, different standards that can be put in. There has to be a process to it and there has to be a process of appeal. And I'd refer anything more in depth than that to the law director because I'm getting into his, I'm not going to practice law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, weigh in on this? Falls in the category of aesthetic zoning, uh, Bojenka, which it can be done. Uh, would have to go through the zoning board or through the planning commission recommendation to change the zoning code Would, um, there are some examples across the country it tends to be very controversial when you get into that topic yeah because how dirty is dirty right is Stand, that, is that the standards are, standards are difficult okay but that would be something we might discuss with the planning commission those of us who are interested sure yeah, yeah. okay i'll bring it up in committee great Oh, um, you mean or bring it up in a committee to recommend to the okay commission. okay um, number while um, Gary if if it was in a in like general uh, regulations in terms of um, you know like for instance getting your grass cut when it's eight inches or something like that that's as far as I know it's not in the zoning code that's in the general regs I think so would that have grass to cutting yes. yes that's a safety issue I think okay so there's a difference between a, a safety issue versus aesthetic issues Yes. Okay. okay. Other elected officials, city auditor, heck. No report. Ordinances for second reading. Ordinance 10406, an ordinance authorizing the service <laughs> safety director to execute a utility easement with the Hocking Valley Bank. Ordinance 10506, an ordinance granting variances from the Athens City Subdivision regulations for property located at 78 and 80 Hudson Avenue to allow a minor lot split. Ordinance 10606, an ordinance granting variances from the Athens City Subdivision regulations to Stephen Abdella for property located outside the corporate limits but within the three mile jurisdiction to allow a minor lot split. Ordinance 10706, an ordinance repealing Ordinance 02606 to extend the tax abatement program in the community reinvestment area for a period of five years. Ordinance 10906, an ordinance to rezone the landmark properties on Kurtz Street from an M zone to an R3 zone. Ordinance 11106, an ordinance amending the 2006 Appropriation Ordinance. Now on to ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 11406, an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title VII Traffic Code and declaring an emergency. <coughs> Member Flowers. Mr. President, this is an ordinance, um, as you stated, prohibiting a uh, right turn on red. Um, as you'll see there, the ones in bold are the ones uh, updating the code for um, no right turns on red, um, some of which 
for the East State one that we talked about in committee before, can you recommendation from the police chief, which we talked about before? Paul? Member Weil. Um, I know we talked about the one on um, East State and Carpenter, but this sounds like a, quite a few more that were added on. Quite a list. Yeah. Yes. Right. There are actually ones up front to the mayor. Well, there's, there are two types here, because when we, when the clerk and I got together to do this, we went back and checked the original ordinance and found there are places that it's already posted that aren't listed in the ordinance, uh, like on Court Street at Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, there are another type of it that is where we have done the, air, the signage, that when the left turn is happening, no turn on red, and the law director advised we ought to have those in the ordinance also, even though it's periodic, not all the time. And the last one, <coughs> which adds a few, is that 682 and uh, 56 and <coughs> Union, where we're putting up the new signalizations, will have those lights that will come on on the green arrow. And so in preparation of, of that being completed later this year, we added that one. Okay. So Further comments? Maybe <clears throat> flowers. So just to be clear then, the only new um, no right turn on red is the East State onto right. East Carpenter. All yes. the other ones have already been there. And, and in addition, those 682 ones, are, of course, the new construction. West yeah. State onto North Lancaster? Was that, that was limited hours, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Like. Yes, but it is. It is a not, you know, a posted one, and that's what the law directors advise. Even if it is periodic, i.e., by having an electronic device turn on when the left hand turn is okay the other way, or if it's limited hours, he feels this should be included in there just okay. in case somebody would say, "Well, that's not in your ordinance. You I can't." See. Okay, I just can't find me for it. Six okay. Can yes. I ask about 682 westbound onto Richland Avenue? That's that's the right onto the bridge, right? No, that's the right going down down to High University Inn. Ah, okay. Or it could no be, turn yeah. on red, huh? Well, but that's one that's when the left arrow is on for the people coming down 682 okay. the hill, and they have the green arrow. You have to put okay. the sign on to say there's no turn on red when lit. That's the same as the South Schaefer onto Richard right. Avenue as okay. well, right there at the peak. Okay. <clears throat> same thing happens. Okay. Further comments? Ordinance 115 is six, an ordinance amending Exhibit A of Ordinance 0 12605 <coughs> to increase the staffing levels in the police department and declaring an emergency. Member Sands. Mr. President, I move that we consider 0 06 under suspension of the rules. Second. We talked about this in, in committee last week, um, and at that point, there was some um, uh, unawareness of when communication officer man would be leaving duty. He left duty um, the 29th of September, so it's incumbent that we um, pass this so that we can cover his communication slot temporarily anyway. Further discussion on suspension of the rules only. All those in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 115.06? Aye. Those opposed? Rules have been suspended. Mr. President, I move adoption of Ordinance 115.06. Second. Second. Um, again, this is a position, a communication officer, um, a vital position in our police force, and um, it has been covered by four officers. Um, what we're doing is increasing the full-time equivalent position by one to change that from four to five um, to allow a part-time communications officer to assume full-time duties until a new officer can be trained. Um, this ordinance would have a sunset clause of the 31st of December 2006. It would only this increase would only be until the end of this calendar year. Further discussion? This Member is just Bishop. The mi most minute thing. But mm -hmm. I thought it said 45. And I think it means. Out. I know. So I was just thinking is there a way to make the strikeout a diagonal? Because I suspect if this is copied, it's going to look like 45. I, we can so just a typo thing. Typographical. Right, right. Error. The four should be. 
after. And it, it because is. It's a right. But, but it doesn't. In, in ours, it says 45. Yeah. No, it's just it's a strike thing. You, you, it, just because it, it hits it right there. The strikeout is exactly on the thing that goes across the floor. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah. So okay. it looks like 45. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Okay, further discussion? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 11506. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 11606, an ordinance amending the 2006 Appropriation Ordinance. Member Sands. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to move that we consider Ordinance 11606 under suspension of the rules. Second. Uh, we talked about this in committee, and we did not express the possible need for suspension of the rules at this point. However, when I talked to Ray Hazlett, who um, is our um, acting service safety director and is um, directly in charge of the um, Athens community television operation, it has become clear that there is not enough money encumbered in the budget to make the October payment from the city to um, Athens Community Television. At this point, we are paying for work already completed. So we're paying the 1st of October for work that was completed in September. And we don't have that money encumbered at this moment. Further discussion on suspension of the rules. All those in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 11606? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The rules have been suspended. Mr. President, I move adoption of Ordinance 11606. Second. Um, again, in our committee discussion, we uh, talked about the fact that the annual budget for Athens Community Television has been set by council at 56000 per year. However, at the beginning of the year, we only encumbered $40,000 because there was some concern whether the cable franchise fees would continue to flow as they had in the past. They have continued to flow. There is at least $16,000 there, uh, which we need to appropriate $16,000 to, to raise the $40,000 to fifty-six dollars to get us through the end of the year. Um, I had suggested that I was going to ask Matt Green, the director of Athens Community Television, to come tonight. Instead, I ask him to prepare a report, which I think you all got in your box, which speaks about the activities of community television this year. Um, you'll note that he has begun working with Passion Works, the Red Cross, Children's Services, and other community groups to, to uh, reach out. He provided us a, a colorful pie chart, which I got. I don't, mine came across the computer. Um, um, over 200 hours of programming have been developed, and this shows how it is, it is uh, broken up. Um, we do receive in uh, the clerk's office a monthly report from Athens Community Television, again, giving us this information incrementally. Um, it can be forwarded to individuals if they wish, but it is in the office. Um, Last of all, equipment rental. So far, um, since January, they've rented out over four. They rented out 458 pieces of equipment, which is about 51 rentals a year. So there is quite a bit of traffic and interest in the community television um, station, as it is located now on Richland Avenue. Member Phillips. Well, I have a question. There was a an article in the Athens News some within the last couple of months about um, the lack of programming on Athens Community Television. And I don't know, is this 200 hours since the contract started? Or you know, are there still big gaps in the programming where there isn't anything on? I don't watch it, so I don't really know what the, the status is of that. I don't know either at this point. I don't know either at this point. Member Bain, did you? I just said you're working too. <laughs> I think there was a misstatement uh, by Mr. Sands, uh, by Mr. Sands, and I may be incorrect, but it says as of September 27, 
Act has had approximately 230 requests for playback, equaling approximately 200 hours of programming. Is that not request to see things again? Am I, is Mr. Green here? That, that was how I read it. I, I missed, I didn't understand it that same way. Yep, okay. Do you mind okay. <laughs> talking about what was in there? <laughs> yeah. I'm Matt Green, Executive Director and CEO of Athens Community Television Incorporated. The 230 requests for playback are how many programs have been turned in since January or when we took over. The 200 hours is the amount that that program has added up to be. So, you know, it's, you know, one show may be a half hour, another show might be an hour and a half. So you add those 230 up, you get about 200 hours. Other questions for Mr. Hold there a minute. Member Wild, you had a question? Um, yeah, so we appropriated how much for $40,000 for the year? Yeah. 56. The original say. PO was set at $40,000. The contract is for 56. So you're behind 16,000 that needs to be appropriated. Okay. I, I'm just looking at um, all this financial paperwork we got here. This is uh, 215 transaction or rather fund and it's, it says 62 on this combined appropriations um, what, what by uh, either date August 6 expenditures the one we just approved uh, it's one of the 114 page I don't know, thing okay. we put together um, okay. can I, maybe can I, I can clarify a little bit here. thank you okay Normally, when I make up the budget and present to council, I do what the normal year's activity is, which I did at $56,000, and that's what you'll see is appropriated, I believe. Mm -hmm. The previous contractor was running on a payment at the end of the quarter type situation, so their payment would be $16,000. So I only budgeted the fifty-six. Their contract ended subject to receiving their final report and final audit, they may be due up to 16000 So the auditor appropriated or encumbered that amount of money, dropping my 56 down to 40, knowing the new company would do it. So now, as since the funds have come in from the standpoint of from Continental on it, there's sufficient monies to do there to honor the original contract. The only reason we're going from the 56 up to the 72 is because we're trying to allow to pay off an old contract and then make the current payments on a new contract. So are they on a different schedule where they're getting paid at the beginning of the quarter where the original okay <clears throat> you have to take it over time with the previous contractor because way back when they first had it they were advanced a quarter mm. uh, and then they were submitting it <coughs> and being paid in essence for the next quarter. Well, then, it, as gradually over the years, as their financial house got better, that was switched to being payment at the end. We started this one out on a monthly basis, and I don't forget which month it was, <coughs> but we were already back on to paying at the end of the month. But that contract acts, asks for monthly versus quarterly, which is fine. Subject. Other comments? The difference is really because of money that's held back for the, for the previous operators of the community television. Any other questions for Mr. Green? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of adoption of the ordinance? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. An ordinance accepting the petition for annexation of approximately 13.341 acres owned by SJB Development Inc. Hampton Inn site located on East State Street. Member Phillips, please speak to Ordinance 117 that I did label as I started. Mr. President, this ordinance um, is the next step in the process of annexing the land where um, the Hampton Inn is being built out on East State Street. Um, this goes through several stages where we said that we'd be willing to accept it. The county commissioners 
did their part of releasing it and now it's coming back to City Council and we will be having a public hearing on this on November 6th which is part of the process that that be advertised and people have the opportunity to come speak to us about that so um, that will fit in with the, the timeline before we get to third reading other comments member flowers where will the public hearing be here just before our um, regular meeting any other comments Ordinance 118 of the section ordinance designating the Hampton Inn annexation area located on East State Street, a B3 zone. Number Phillips. Mr. President, um, this ordinance establishes the zone for the land that's going to be coming within the city with the annexation. This is in keeping with the, the zoning in that area, and it's appropriate for the use that's, that's proposed for the land. Other comments? Ordinance 11906, an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title III, Administrative Chapter 3.10, Alarm Systems. Member Bain. Mr. President, 01906 attempts to resolve the longstanding problem we've had with um, the uh, need to recoup losses from inappropriately pulled um, code. Um, or improperly invoked um, alarm systems versus our need to make sure that any time an alarm is needed, um, the alarm is pulled and goes forward. So to that end, what we've done, and we can go over these very quickly, we've first of all included the large state agency, also known the large 500-pound gorilla, as a subscriber in this. We've also talked about alarm activation and fees and um, <clears throat> how this is slightly different. Um, actually, I had very little part in drafting the ordinance. Um, of course, the law director went over it, and before that, um, Debbie, Teresa Carter, and the two chiefs worked it out, and I just sat at the table and talked with them for a while about it. So this is suited to what they wanted, too. It's a single ordinance. It um, also then goes on and talks about the different um, um, circumstances in under which there we will not be charging initially for having an alarm but if your alarm malfunctions you have a small little grace period and then finally you will have a substantial charge if the if the alarms continue to be sounded and if especially if the equipment only i should say if the equipment rolls one thing that's unique about this is both chiefs will tell us when and if charges should be made and um, we have a problem, I, we had a problem with the fees not being collected, and so um, one of the things we have is uh, a portion in here, a section in here toward the end where we will, after 30 days, no more nice guy, we will go for um, civil action to recover the fee if those are established by the chiefs to be appropriate. So it seems to me that this um, relatively tortuous process produced something that may in fact work. We don't. We won't be listening to complaints about not having the, a good um, uh, ordinance governing alarms, and everybody's had a chance to have a go at it. And um, there's also a way for the fees to be reduced. But fundamentally, the people who should make the determination that would be the two chiefs are deciding if something has to be will be charged. If that doesn't work, we can change it again. Almost everything we do is a work in process. So there we are with this 01906. Other comments on the ordinance? Member Patterson. This is something that we've tossed around for a very long time. And I uh, am very glad to see some uh, decisive action taken. And as, as um, Nancy said, if it if it doesn't work, we can take another look at it, or if there are problems, residual problems that arise, which frequently happens. Um, but this is a very positive step and something we've needed for a very long time. Other comments? Announcements and other business. I have a couple first, and then we'll move on to a couple of other things that we will be handling under this item on our agenda. Uh, I have been given by the clerk uh, two notices of public hearing. 
Athens City Council will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. Monday, October 9th, 2006 in the council chambers here on the third floor of City Building. This hearing is to consider a recommendation by the Planning Commission to adopt the comprehensive plan for the City of Athens. Long time in coming, folks. And our second notice of public hearing, City Council will hold a public hearing 7 p.m. Monday, October 16th. 2006 in these very council chambers, third floor of the city building. <laughs> the hearing is to consider a recommendation by the Planning Commission to rezone the landmark properties on Kurt Street from an M zone to an R3 zone. Now, uh, Member Patterson. Mr. President, I move to remove uh, 5906 from the table. Second. Um, <clears throat> Just pass that part of it. We have a motion and a second to remove Ordinance 5906 <laughs> from the table. Uh, discussions on removing. Um, the the <clears throat> ordinance was tabled in July um, to clarify and to further negotiate with the ODNR concerning an agreement um, on the property at Stroud's Run. Uh, at this point, an, an agreement has been reached, and uh, that is why we are removing it from the table. And it was discussed in last week's committee meeting that it, this would be done. Other comments on removal? All those in favor of removing Ordinance 5906 from the table? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ordinance has been removed. Mr. Preston, I move to amend 5906 by substituting the new agreement. Second. Motion and a second to sub uh, man by substitution. Uh, well, substituting a different agreement. Uh, further discussion? Um, just to point out, the only change that came to you uh, from all the discussions we've had previously is that uh, a decision was made that impertuitum is not a word. <laughs> and so it was substituted with forever. And that really <laughs> is the only change that we have from uh, the agreement that was discussed last week. Debbie? And this, the, attached to the ordinance, is the new agreement. Right. <clears throat> Is in perpetuity a word? <laughs> yes. Two words. It's two words. Yeah, two words, okay. <laughs> well, we've used Further that discussion nine on word a lot. <laughs> on Ordinance 59, it. and if I may ask the uh, member to uh, clarify why we are not removing Ordinance 60 from the table at the same time and what one may expect. Right. The reason for not removing uh, 6006 from the table is because there are no changes in it. So it will be removed when this ordinance reaches third reading. So it will come off at third reading so that the two ordinances would be passed on the same evening, which should those, be October 16th. And for those with quizzical looks on their face in the audience, when something is tabled, it goes on the table at what reading it was. If something is amended, it goes back for first reading. So that's why the one ordinance is being introduced and is at first reading, and we would expect the other ordinance to come off the table when this one reaches third reading. Am I characterizing that correctly? That is correct. And the plan is for a second reading at a special meeting on next Monday the 9th. So this is first reading. This is first reading. Well, not yet, because we haven't well, passed the amendment, the but it not will yet. be. Okay. Yeah, we've removed it from the table. We have discussed, uh, we have had a motion and a second to amend. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Member Weil. So can you give us a rundown for people who weren't here last committee, what the changes are between this agreement and the last We're agreement. just talking the amendment at this point, and then I would anticipate that, that she would discuss. Well, if we're accepting the amendment, we should discuss the amendment, right? Okay. The difference between A and B. Okay. Well, that's right. I apologize. Yeah, You're right. Okay. Um, some of the principal language that was a part of that ongoing discussion 
Uh, for one, the, the um, clarification that it is indeed an ownership, it is a transfer of deed, it is a transfer of deed including all uh, mineral rights that are currently owned by the state. They obviously can't include things they don't own, um, but it does include that. Um, another change is more emphasis on the terms education and recreation um, in recognition of the original concept of the park as uh, an educational land lab, if you will, and the amount of um, educational programming that occurs at the park. It also emphasizes the continuation of recreation for the public um, and that there will not be a charge to enter the park, that uh, that is, it, it is essentially a free park. Uh, that also brought up discussion of what can the city and uh, what can the city charge for and what can they not. Uh, for example, if the city were to choose to reinstate lifeguards, that would be considered a, an improvement of services and could then um, lead to a charge for swimming. Um, that is considered a, an improvement that we would therefore have to pay for and that that would be all right, uh, which leaves a lot of leeway on our part. The Part of the reason for the emphasis on, on the, the free activities is because of grant monies that uh, depend on the free activities. Also, one of the questions was the uh, 10 uh, horsepower motors on the lake and why uh, the agreement said that we needed to keep that. Again, that has to do with grant monies that can be um, garnered by the city if that is kept. Um, forever instead of in um, and it also emphasized, and I believe this was in here, it, just some slight rewording that the city um, could, cannot transfer, lease, or in any way assign interest to Stroud's Run, uh, which protects uh, the park from being developed uh, commercially. Um, <clears throat> it does... Um, emphasize the inclusion and, and remainder of boating, fishing, and hunting activities. Wait, wait, where is that one? Last one. I think it's number nine. Page number nine. five. Okay. Seven, third line. Number seven? Okay. Oh, yeah, seven. And uh, the clarification that when the city has uh, special events that it is the city that decides what uh, permit has to be um, involved in that process. It isn't a process of going back to the state for permits for special activities. It would be um, the right of the city to make those decisions. Um, number nine to me is very important. The emphasis on the continued assistance from the Division of Wildlife and that includes such things as um, stocking the lake and uh, hunting licenses, um, hunting uh, sign, signage, and uh, some of the, the services that the wildlife department offers to park areas. So the, that's principally um, the things that have gone through a process of change while we have been uh, working on this. I, I personally feel that the final agreement is very easy to follow. It's, it's quite clear and it certainly went through a lot of discussion in the process, but I think this is quite clear. Number one. So uh, if we get a grant for an improvement, we can't charge for it? We make any improvement, we can charge for it. So we get a, a lifeguard, for instance. We now have um, mm -hmm. stickers for swimmers, I guess. 
Um, but if we make an improvement to something else within the within the park, um, would that mean? And it was through a grant, we wouldn't be able to and put a fee to it, right? No, I I don't think that's an accurate characterization. For example, if we got uh, grant monies to um, fill or to add some kind of improvements to boat ramps, those could be charged for. So if we were to repair the boat ramp, would that be an improvement? Or if we were just to make it better, that would be we charge? I, I can't answer that detailed a question, Paul. I, okay. I don't know. I'm just to, wondering. Yeah. Okay. Other comments on the amendment, Member Bishop? I just have a question under seven because mm -hmm. um, I know last time you know we talked about the <clears throat> emphasis on hunting if I may say um, and here it says um, these activities boating fishing hunting shall conform to all laws and I imagine those are safety laws and when you can actually right. hunt and do these other things etc it says and policies so I was wondering like does policy mean well, that's my question. D does, you know, hunting policies are that, let's say, hunting is allowed, you know, six months out of the year because that's not a law. That's a policy that the state must have. Is that the kind I of thing? I would answer that um, by alluding to the wildlife agreement because really the, the wildlife department is the one that uh, has the hunting laws, um, sells the hunting permits, and um, is really the one that oversees the hunting process. Right. So, and that's part of the reason why the agreement with the wildlife department, a separate agreement <coughs> for them to help and to partner in those activities. Other comments? All those in favor of the amendment as stated. Aye. Aye. Those opposed. Aye. Now wait, what are we agreeing to? I'm the sorry. Amendment. This is the amendment. That we uh, approve of the changes in the yes. amendment. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I must vote. And that will lead to a vote on the particular issue. Right. She is introducing it tonight for first reading. Okay. It will go as back amended. to first reading. Okay then I will vote yes on the amendment. Okay. Paul voted no. Uh, Member Weil is the only no vote I've seen, unless anyone else would care to. So the amendment passes 6-1. This uh, puts the, um, the ordinance back to first reading. And uh, so uh, what we will be looking at in the next uh, two weeks is um, what um, we would like to do concerning this piece of land. Um, I believe this is a great opportunity for the city. It is an opportunity for us to um, have a local administrative um, body work with this piece of property and to protect it um, and to maintain it as a recreational facility. Um, at the same time, the city can establish policies for it, establish a ma management plan. The agreement is, especially the one that will be coming uh, forward, is a, a partnership in terms of how that the park is handled in these very issues that were brought up in terms of the hunting and so on. Um, it is to provide enjoyment of public, uh, recreation, and educational pursuits. This is a piece of land that did belong to um, a gentleman in Athens, and it was uh, given to the state. And so in a way, this is bringing it back home. Um, we do already own Sells Park. We have owned it in not an unlike agreement for many years, and uh, it has not been an albatross. And of course, with this opportunity comes responsibilities 
those responsibilities are for establishing the policies that we would want for this piece of property. The responsibility of generating whatever funds are necessary to keep it going. Um, our good news in terms of that is that we have a commitment from Ohio University to um, support the project and it is in their best interest because um, many departments do use the, the park at this time. Also, ODNR is uh, offering um, $49,500 for the first year of operation to help the project get started. And it is the intention of the city to work towards an endowment fund that can continue to support uh, this activity. And I, I would remind you as well that we are not entering into a purchase of this agreement, but rather ODNR is offering to not only give the property back to the Athens area, but to offer 49.5 to get it started in the first year. Other comments on the ordinance? Member Wild. I think 49.5 is not adequate for one year. I would like to say that, that, that for correct. multiple years. I think in one sense this is an, an item that actually would be better on a ballot and with a, with a fee involved to it because this is a major uh, undertaking in terms of square area. I uh, don't know how it, it lines up in terms of how much acre acreage we have in the city versus what we're about to acquire. Um, I know from many of my people I'm hearing on the west side who do not like the idea that we're spending money on something like this. And it's not a lot of money. We say it's only going to be 99000 and change. But uh, they think it should be spent elsewhere. Um, so in terms of the agreement, I think it's flawed just for that one shot deal in terms of money coming in. Uh, in terms of the make, us making a decision, I think it would be better put to the people and in a ballot with a bill attached to it. Member Bain. <clears throat> Mr. President, um, I, do, I do have serious concerns about what Carol said, commitment to generate the funds needed for the park. Those, I, wrote them to, I wrote those words down and I'm very <laughs> concerned because last week we had um, a report that said they had really no idea how much money they were making on this park. Um, I thought that was pretty obscure and absurd to have that kind of statement and I was hoping that maybe by next time we might have at least some notion of what the park generates so I can make an informed decision. I did ask my <clears throat> constituents who talked to me about various things, complaints, and I would say everybody thinks it's um, a good uh, park, but t about two-thirds of my, the people who talked to me said, it's really a pig in the poke. You don't know what you're getting into. And I'm concerned about that. The other third said it's great. So then I said, well, how do you think we're going to pay for it? And they hadn't thought about that part of it. And I guess I'd like to know what it generates now, because it's a pretty rundown park at this point in time. Endowment, well, maybe. But <clears throat> I don't know how many candy bars we'd have to sell to make it work the correct way. I mean, I just think I would like more information if you can come up with it, Carol. I don't know. I can't understand how this, a state entity wouldn't know how much they got from camping. I don't understand it. I mean, I, whose pocket did it go into is my question if we don't have that information. It's just, that's unheard of. And we did have people out there because we've seen, I mean, I've seen them go by with their Airstreams. So I think um, to uh, reduce my concern about commitment to generate the funds needed for the park, where does it come? Does it come after police or before police? Does it come after fire or before fire? Does it come before or after streets? And it's very frightening to have no knowledge base. And the university, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think that's a uh, potentially, um, OK, so maybe we got uh, some support for a few years. I don't know. I don't think, I, I can't see it going on. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Other comments? <clears throat> uh, just in terms of the university commitment at this time, it is a three-year mm -hmm. commitment. And in reality, that uh, means that the first year of operation should not have to cost the city anything. 
I, I certainly understand where you're coming from, that that does not make a permanent uh, situation. Other comments by council members? Orden, I'm sure there are a couple of uh, uh, audience members that may wish to speak. No? Ordinance 5906 has been removed from the table, amended, and read for the first time, and will be read for the second. Did I say 56? I apologize, 59, and will be read at a special session a week from today. Any other announcements and other business? Member Phillips. Um, Mr. President, I'll need a Planning and Development Committee meeting after the hearing so we can talk a little bit more about the comprehensive plan. Okay. Member Bain. Mr. President, um, I was absent on um, last time during the fire storm <laughs> that happened, and so um, I'm here to, the, over concerning the labor contract, and since that time I've learned um, <clears throat> that the auditor has agreed to withhold funds for whomever wishes to have them withheld. So. The problem doesn't exist, even though there might have been votes to override the veto. So at this point, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure everyone understands where we are coming from right now. I think the people, the three people, four people that voted um, for the amendment, I wasn't here, so I get to speak on it. I missed the whole thing, missed the firestorm and all the quotable quotes. But um, you know, so we are going to have it happen without, without a big deal. Thank you, Kathy. Any other announcements and other business? Member Sands. Uh, Mr. President, I have already received one request for um, transfer some funds from for next week, so we may have others. Finance committee meeting is what you're asking for? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I can't remember. Are there any other committees that wish to schedule for next week? Communication. Member Bishop. Yes. Okay, communication. I think we'll talk yeah. about what, I guess I want to say, what non-friendliness communicates. So we'll kind of tie it somehow to communication. I'll put an environmental committee on. Okay. Any I'm others? Right okay. The usual oh, plethora oh, of committees. Oh, yes. um, I just wanted to re-announce that the uh, pre-bid meeting for the um, request for proposals for the bus system mm -hmm. is this Thursday morning at 10 o'clock in council chamber. Okay. Any other announcements? Opportunity for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services that have not been co covered on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone wishing to speak before council? Seeing none and having addressed all items on our agenda, we stand adjourned.